Okay, so here we are. It is a lovely Friday afternoon here on the East Coast. Uh, I'm Patrick Weinert. I'm your host here at the Money Mission Live. Uh, and today I've got a special guest, a good friend, CJ Meenan. Uh, and let me just say, I want to tell you a little bit about how I met CJ. A couple of years ago, uh, I was invited by the DC mayor's office to attend a seminar on small business. Uh, and I was very fortunate at the time to meet CJ. CJ actually hosted the seminar. And during the course of the seminar, I just learned so much about business. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're always learning. That's, you know, that we're, we are all in the business of learning. I, I hope those of you watching uh, are of the same mindset, but you know, we're all in the business of learning. And during his seminar, I learned so much just about business that I hadn't even really thought of before. And uh, he so inspired me to do better with my business uh, that he and I, you know, not only did, did it push me, but I really developed a great relationship with CJ. Um, over the last couple of years, I've been in touch with him. I've seen him grow his business. Uh, I've seen him improve the lives of hundreds, if not thousands of people that he's interacted with. Uh, and CJ is the founder and owner of what's known as Open for Business Ventures. Uh, and this is an organization that helps entrepreneurs. It helps people with startups. It helps people grow businesses. Uh, and the reason I want to—I ha had him on here today, or I'm having him on here today, is because your income, right? Your income, your job, your job security is the most important factor in your personal financial plan. We've talked about this numerous times. Your income is the most important factor. Um, who is it? You know, we're, we're going into. I know in some of my uh, some of my videos, some of my newsletters that I've sent, uh, sent out to those of you that are following me, I've talked about how uh, economically we're moving into some inflationary times. Prices are going up, and uh, a famous quotation that I like from Warren Buffett, right? Because people ask, "Hey, what can I invest in to protect against inflation?" And he said, "Your best hedge against inflation is your income." And if you have a valuable skill, if you have something that you can bring to people, that's going to help you a lot more than, you know, particular investments that you're in. I'm not saying that isn't important, but it's not nearly as important as your income. And income security can be bolstered if you have a good side hustle. Now, some of you may not be interested in the side hustle, but for those of you who are, this is a special episode of our Money Mission Live. And I brought CJ on here because... I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about small business. I want to talk about generating a side hustle. And I want you to meet CJ because he's just a remarkable guy. I'm really honored to have him as a friend. Uh, so CJ, welcome. Hey, thank you, Patrick. And thank you to your audience for having me today. It's an honor, honor to be back with you. I always get fired up when we work together. So this is, this is helping me just as much as it's helping you and your audience. So thank Thanks, you. CJ. Yeah, my, my pleasure. So, CJ, t can you tell us or tell my audience a little bit about maybe your background? Yeah. Um, you know, what got you interested in Open for Business Ventures? Maybe what you, led you up to that point? Um, and, you know, just give us a little bit about what you what brought you to where you are today. Yeah, that's thank you, Patrick. Great lead in. And I think, you know, maybe what might be relevant based on what you just shared is, you know, the idea of some people not being interested in, in a side hustle but also how important income is in our lives, right? It's one of, the, one of the reasons why I love spending time with you because you get that. You understand how powerful income is. Uh, so for me, you know, I grew up in a working class family. Dad was a, a janitor. My mom was a secretary. And income in our family was based on your job. And, and I was taught, go to school, get good grades, you'll get a good job, and you'll have a nice pension, and you can retire. And, and those types of financial services that you are an expert in uh, that are so important to us today, well, all that will be covered through your pension and you won't have to worry about that. Well, look, guess what? Those days are over, right? right, um, right. And, and, and so the, and, and here was an area of my life where I thought I was never going to have to pay any attention to it. And guess what? I have to pay attention to it now because of the way the economic landscape has changed here in America. Uh, so, so that was a big deal, right? And, and the other big deal was that jobs have changed, right? The, the primary source of our income 
has changed here in the United States. You know, those old go-to secure, I became a school teacher right out of college, and that was gonna be the secure pathway to that wonderful pension. And guess what? It wasn't as secure as I thought it was going to be. There were a lot of ups and downs in the employment market in the New York City public school system, and I was riding those waves. And what was supposed to be certain became uncertain. And at that time, I heard about this exciting, uh, one, of my, one of my friends, Steve Mariotti, who was also a school teacher there, got this wonderful idea to teach young people about entrepreneurship so that they could find another way to bring income into their lives. That was the big, the big uh, impetus or the big cause for why we started the National Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship was to help young folks uh, develop more skills to bring in an income through entrepreneurship. So I did that and I actually resigned from my position as, as a school teacher and started a nonprofit foundation helping others to learn how to start their own business. And I think maybe the other significant part of this for your audience would be that this is an area that I knew nothing about. You know, I had not, I had not been taught anything about entrepreneurship till I was in my early 20s. And, you know, to your testament of staying focused on education and staying focused on learning, I was able to do a pivot in my mid 20s, change careers. And I've been teaching entrepreneurship now for over 30 years, wow. and su supporting myself, supporting my family and helping others support themselves. And I think that's a big deal, right? That, that this is a viable option for people, entrepreneurship, even if you never thought about it in your life, which is the way it was for me. Yeah, that's a really good point you bring up is entrepreneurship is an option. A lot of people I think are intimidated by it. They yeah. think, hey, you know, I'm gonna be out, out here on my own, you know, trying to, you know, make ends meet, trying to earn a living. I don't know what I'm doing, but they don't realize that there's a lot of help, especially for veterans um, right. who make up a good amount of, a good number in my audience. Uh, yep. What, uh, CJ, if, if you were talking to, you know, military, active duty military, who's thinking about transitioning or even a veteran who's holding a job, I mean, even non-veteran, this isn't necessarily applied just to military, but if you're talking to someone who's potentially interested in starting something on the side, yeah. what's something that you've seen has been successful? What's something that you would recommend? Um, obviously they go with their interests, but what's, are there any good ideas that you could share? Yeah, well, this is, you know, this is a, a, a key area in my life and my evolution as an entrepreneur. But really, my partner, Jill Callahan, is responsible for this. You know, she grew up uh, surrounded by, you know, military families, was, you know, lived on military bases, the whole, you know, she had just such a tight connection with that community. And she was the one who said, CJ, you know, veterans could really use this as an option. Uh, also, I was fortunate enough to be teaching the ventures, uh, the Veterans Launching Ventures program at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Uh, up in New Jersey. So that was another great uh, connection to the veteran community. And what, what I found through my work with uh, FDU and, and my partner Jill was that veterans have just uh, all the natural skills necessary to be entrepreneurs, right? I don't know why people don't promote this more than they do, but it, you know, if you think about it, um, the, all, the, all, the, all the training that, that that you all receive as, as active military and as veterans really prepares you for the world of entrepreneurship. And if you think about it, it involves planning, it involves observation. Uh, you know, I think we talked about this, right? There was an Air Force uh, major who created the OODA loop, right? You observe, you orientate, you direct, right. uh, you decide, and then you act. And, right. and that's the spirit, that's the essence of entrepreneurship right there. And really it's, it's so closely aligned with military training and military process that it's a natural step for veterans to take. Is there, is there a particular, like you had mentioned before, uh, I think we had mentioned in conversation before that you noticed lately there were a lot of startups related to gaming. Um, yeah. Uh, are there any things that you've seen that are easy to do if someone's interested in a startup? Like, for instance, 
one thing I've noticed is if you have a particular skill in something uh, and you wanted to maybe, you know, write a small ebook on it, you know, you could potentially write something, tell your story. And I know a lot of people are like, well, why does anybody care what I think? You know, I'm just going to write what other people have already written. And it's like, well, that's not the point. The point is, is that it's you. It's your story. Right. You know, and that's they want right. to connect with you. And so, you know, maybe you could write a little ebook and you could start that. I mean, you're going to do it anyway. So maybe you could sell that on Amazon. Um, what are some what are are there any other ideas you you have that are easy to do? Um, yeah, that I think might you hit on the, on the key point, Patrick. The idea is what's your area of, of, of expertise? What's your unique uh, value that you're bringing into the market, right? And that right. really is where each one of us has a gift or has a skill that we can share with others that we are uniquely qualified to bring into the marketplace that nobody else can do. And yeah. I think that that's the important part to remember, right? Look, I'd been teaching entrepreneurship for 20, 17 years before I actually set out on my own. And you would think that I would just do it with my eyes closed. Well, guess what? I had some fear. I had some stress and I had some anxiety. And I had to remember that my, my knowledge and my experience was unique and that nobody else could bring that into the marketplace. The other thing that's helped me a lot with that fear of stepping out into the world of entrepreneurship, again, because I didn't grow up in an entrepreneurship family. Nobody talked about running a business in my family. There was right. no such thing. It, we, right. I just I didn't even know that individuals could own businesses. I know that sounds right. crazy, but I, I just thought it was this big amorphous company that owned businesses. I really, yeah. You know, so in any event, what I think what really helped me was uh, just focusing on the fact that I was there to be of service, right? I was there to help others through my unique knowledge. And again, that what what's the essence of, of the military, right? Service to others, helping others. I mean, that's the core of what you all do. And, and, and that really is also the core of entrepreneurship. How can I be of service to the people around me and in my community? You know, that's something that I actually took from you, CJ. I'll admit that I, I, I stole that from you. Good. Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that idea, I think, is really... It's so important. It's like if you go into this with the idea of I want to help some, I want to bring as much value as I can to others' lives. You know, I want to educate them. That yeah. is like the most attractive form of business that, that you can have because you're really doing it because you really want to improve. You really That's want right. to help others improve. That's yeah. Right. That, that, it's like it's like educating. It's not selling. It's That's educating right. someone. That's you it. know, and if, if they realize they pull value from their interaction with you and they start to trust you. They will do business with you because they yeah. know that you can address their problems. You know, and that's why, you know, one of the things, too, I've found this is also something that I got from you, CJ, was, you know, the idea that you want to be giving value up front. And so as a general rule, I have always tried to kind of give away the most valuable stuff up front because yeah. people are going to realize, hey, th this is good stuff. And, you know, if this is, you know, they're like, hey, if this is Pat's free stuff, what's this paid stuff like, you know? <laughs> So that's so that's, that's a thing that I think is really, really important. Like you said, it's just definitely, definitely, you know, focusing on bring, bringing education and bringing value. Um, Absolutely. And yeah. in, in terms of coaching folks up on what businesses to go into and whatnot, I always talk to them about, OK, so you have some unique skills that you can bring. But then again, let's go back to the military training, that power of observation. Right. That training that you all receive to observe what's going on around you. You all are uniquely qualified to assess what the market needs. So your ability to look out there and see what's missing, see what needs to be fulfilled, uh, also see what's there that could be improved. Right. Those are also areas that I, I encourage folks to focus on when looking to start a business. So maybe there's a you know, maybe there's a ton of. Uh, you know, the simplistic, maybe you live in, a, in an area where the, the climate's very rainy and, and we need a better way to, to, to sell umbrellas or rain gear or something along those lines. You don't have to invent rain gear. You don't have to invent umbrellas, but maybe there's a better way to get it to the customers that you all can think of. Again, let's go back to military training, supply chain, 
right? You right. all know right. that stuff better than, than, than the average citizen, right? So right. another area where you all can add value and bring those skills, bring the training. So I encourage folks to look at two areas. One, what are you, what are you blessed with? What are the gifts and talents that you have? But then also what's needed in the marketplace? And nine out of 10 times, you should be able to identify a business in your community using those two methods. I think that's great. I, I remember hearing a story once of a, a guy who developed a business moving wooden pallets around, right? He, he'd gone to warehouses and realized there were these businesses that had all these wooden pallets they didn't want. And yeah. he would literally pick them up and transport them to businesses that wanted them and they were willing to pay him for it. Yes. And it's just like, it was like free pallets, you know, the guy, the business is trying to get rid of them. And uh, yeah. So they're just, idea. are there any, CJ, are there any good books or resources you recommend for people to go to, to develop or kind of get the creative juices going in their mind as far as ideas? Yep. yep. Well, listen, naturally, I'm going to send folks over to check out our, our website, right? We, course, we yeah. give ourselves as the experts on, on entrepreneurship and startups. So if you check out xpstartuplab.com, right, uh, and, and that, that'll get you there. Or you can just find me, right, and, and, and you'll find a way to our website. But, you know, look, the, the one book that, I, that, I, that got me going, right, that really got me fired up was Think and Grow Rich. And I, yeah. I, because so much of where I needed help was my mindset, right? And, and my mindset and believing and trusting that I could do this. And then yes. also that, that fire, that energy, that determination that you need in order to be successful as an entrepreneur, right? I think you all do a lot of work on mental toughness that the average citizens don't, right? And I think that mental toughness can be transferred into a business toughness where you all have the ability to succeed as entrepreneurs that, that a lot of folks need to develop in other ways. That military training helps develop that mental toughness, that goal setting, that developing a plan, and then the actual rigor of getting up every single day and doing it. Yeah, well, yeah. Gotta execute. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Actually, I'm reading a really good book right now. Um, it's called Execution by a guy yeah. named Larry Bossidy, and he yeah. talks a lot about you know, that very thing. It's you know, how do you how do you get yourself to execute? So yes. you know, for watchers, anyone's interested, is another book. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. It kind of got the, the it reminded me. It's CJ, it's yeah. And Jill yeah. talks to me about it all the time. She's like, you know, we really should have a program called Execution. And I'm like, I don't know about the branding on that one, right? The word, the language might confuse people. So she always kids me about it, you know, that we're going to start a program called Execution. But you're right, Patrick, it is critical. It is critical. You know, we can have all the plans in the world, but if we're not willing to get up and, and do the hard Roll work. The sleeves and get the reps in, the yeah. I know it is. Uh, so, CJ, can you say again how people reach you, your website? Sure. Yep. You mail. can find us on xpstartuplab.com okay. and, and, and also just find me. I'm on Facebook as well. So you can jump off and find me on Facebook. Send me a note saying, hey, CJ, would love to learn more about what you have. And, and I'm happy to send you over uh, materials, whatever, you know, help get you started. We specialize, so folks know, we specialize in aspiring entrepreneurs, folks who are in that idea phase or may have just started, they're still in that year one phase, and we want to help you get a solid foundation so that you can build a business. And as we discussed earlier, Patrick, grow into business, right? Right, that right. Weird for me too. I don't, how am I going to run a big company? I don't know how to do that. Right, right. right. But what I do know how to do is help one customer at a time, right? right? And if I can focus on helping one customer at a time, well then that's what turns into a business. That's how it works. But if I start to think about, wow, how am I gonna be this big company? You know, we have programs now in, in Bermuda. We're, we're servicing the entire public school system in Bermuda. We're working with platforms that go across the United States now. Things, groups and, and, and volumes of people that I never dreamed of, never dreamed possible. And if you had said it to me when I started, I'd say, oh, there's no way we could do that. Yeah. But again, one, one, one customer at a time. Right. It works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. What you bring up is important because like, you know, for those that are watching that may not have a business but are thinking about it, 
you know, they want to start small, just, you know, start something that's sustainable. That's almost like a hobby. Um, and then tr try to turn that into a business slowly in a sustainable rate. So CJ, you said xpstartuplab.com. I'll put that in the comments beneath this yep. video. Excellent. As a link for everybody. Okay. And it, it's all just XP startup. Uh, I'm sorry. It's xpstartup.com. xpstartup.com. Okay. What are like, <clears throat> what are some things that you wish you had known? Wow. How much when you were starting out, like, and, and you can pick any, yeah. any point, like you could say when you're just starting your entrepreneurship teaching or when you're just starting your business. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, one of the things I, I wish I had known was how willing people are to help. Right. I, 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 I did not, I did not trust <laughs> a lot of people. Right. And I just didn't believe, you know, we, I grew up in New York city, right? Look, I can say this out loud. It's a little bit of stress about sharing ideas and reaching out to others for help. Right. That's a, that's a different city that you grew up in, right. Compared to the way it is now. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. And, and so look, New Yorkers are wonderful people. I'm so proud to be from there. But, but at the time I had stress about right. sharing with other people. And I was intimidated to ask for help. That was the other thing. You know, some of it was my own pride, quite frankly. It had nothing to do with, with, with New Yorkers. It was me saying, well, I can just do this all by myself. I don't need any help. And, and what I've learned, uh, a big lesson that I wish I knew back then, how important the team is. You know, I, I have a wonderful partner in Jill Callahan. She, her, her brilliance, her genius in terms of technology and matching tech tools with education tools. Quite frankly, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without her. And so that ability to connect with other people and, and other talented people like Jill and other people like you, Patrick, quite frankly, who've, who've helped me in so many different ways and taught me things that I never would have known if I had tried to do it all myself, right? So I think that building the team uh, is a huge part of what I wish I had known back then. What are ways that, that you would recommend, you know, if somebody's starting a side hustle and they're like, hey, you know, I need to find help with marketing or I need to find help with, um, you know, my finances or yeah. with understanding, you know, the legal requirements, but I don't yeah. have a lot of money yet to shell out to pay a lawyer or to pay legal Zoom or, you know, I don't have I don't have the money yet to really devote to these resources. Yeah. How do I find that help? Great, great question. Right. Because, again, I didn't have a network of entrepreneurs in my in my circle. When I first started, I had a network of employees. Uh, so, you know, we tend to travel in clusters of like minded right. people. And so I wasn't hanging out with a lot of entrepreneurs. So the, where do I find entrepreneurs? Uh, Thank goodness so much has changed, right? And thank goodness for technology. Uh, LinkedIn has been an amazing tool for me, right? And Facebook. Uh, groups like what you're promoting here. Uh, you know, these, you know, anybody who's listening today, if you're looking for a particular skill set or service from someone, I suggest you look in this network that Patrick has created for you all. I mean, it's 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 here, it's in here. And then if it's not, if you can't see it, you know, easily reach out to Patrick. He knows, he knows people. And then the circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And then you can ultimately reach more and more people. Stephen Covey does a great bit on this, uh, you know, in, in his book about the circle of influence of, of who's in our immediate circle. And then how do we connect to other circles beyond us? So if you're looking for talent, I suggest you know, ask around in the circles you travel in and then start to reach out to things like LinkedIn uh, and, and get referrals from people you trust. That's another powerful lesson I learned is make sure I work with people that I trust and I'm connected to in some way. Um, and then finally, you know, there's a lot of really interesting tools that I was afraid of. For instance, like the Fiverr, I think is what it's called. And, you you know, it's talented people who have skills and they'll work on different projects for whatever price you negotiate with them. And I've had 
I've had tremendous success working with 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 talented folks from that service from that platform. So that's how I've done it. That's what's worked for me. And and you know, good luck. To, don't be afraid to try it. Is all I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, I like your mentioning Fiverr. I haven't used Fiverr. I have used Upwork, and okay. I have noticed I've gotten tremendous value from that as well. Similar to what you recommended. But yeah, yep. you can find people there with a tremendous amount of talent, and they're not you know they're not asking you for really high prices no um very reasonable prices uh and and then again if you don't have the resources like you said cj you know going and joining groups one of the things i've found that's been really effective uh for me has been you know joining groups that have a similar interest so Absolutely. you know i'm in the personal finance sphere if, if say somebody wanted to start a a startup when it came to maybe music yeah i'm just yeah. throwing out an example maybe they, they play guitar they're really good at golf or they like it and they want to, you know, teach, you know, in these areas, you know, find a group on Facebook or LinkedIn, join that group, start commenting, start trying to help other people and you'll build that trust with them in those groups. I mean, I used to say I'm not big on social media, you know, until COVID hit and then this is like, this is where everybody is. So, you know, um, but yeah, social media really is such a, it's grown to such proportions now that, it's actually easier in a lot of ways. It's made our lives easier because now we can connect, connect with people much easier that we have common interests with, and you can, like you said, build that circle. Yeah, and and look, let's face it, folks with with uh, military experience, military backgrounds, are so talented, and yeah. and they're, they're they're involved in so many different areas of our economy and services that that I you know. LinkedIn, my, my veteran connections on LinkedIn, that's my that's my strongest community that I work with, quite frankly, on LinkedIn. It's it's the most diverse and the most uh, you know talented is, is the only way I could say it. Are there are there any areas that you feel you notice most new entrepreneurs struggle with the most? I know you said, hey, something you wish you had known is all the help out there. Yeah. Is there any particular area that you've noticed most commonly when somebody's trying to start something that yeah. they feel either overconfident um, or they, there's a lot that they don't know and yeah. they don't necessarily know that they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's another complex question, right? With a lot of different <laughs> uh, answers to it. Let me start with, with one that I encounter all the time and okay. one that frankly I was guilty of as well is not knowing, I did not know, and I'm, I was guilty of this when I started. I did not know the difference between a good idea and a viable business. And, you know, I was having a lot of good ideas hanging out in the bar with my buddies and we were just, woohoo, let's do this. And we had great ideas, but they were not necessarily viable businesses. And the difference really is, can you find a market for, for your product or service? And can you find customers who are willing to pay you for your solution, right? Uh, uh, your your product or service, and then can you replicate it? Can you do it again, right? So most of my good ideas were just one-offs, right? There was a great idea, and that was that. It was not a, a replicable business. And in order to start a sustainable business, you have to be able to do it again. So so that was that was a big part of it. The other part of it was I didn't want the the other part that or other error that I see folks making again that I made was I didn't do the research. I thought, well, I like it. Everybody must like it. And boy, that couldn't be further from the truth. Could not be further from the truth. <laughs> I'm a very eclectic, unique person. My likes do not translate very well over to general society's likes and dislikes, right? So I have a unique perspective, we all do. But, but my way of looking at things may not be the best when it comes to rolling out products or services that people want, need, or desire. My wife, she's the one I need to talk to, right? Uh, my, my, my sister, she, she understands markets much better than I do. Um, my children understand markets way better than I do, right? So, so I think you need to do the research before you go full in on a business. Make sure there's a market there and, and, and make sure people are willing to pay you. And then the final part of this, Patrick, is you've got to run the numbers, right? Don't assume the numbers are going to work in your favor. My experience is they usually don't. 
unless I'm paying attention to the numbers, they usually go the other way on me. So right. I really, you know, that's why I love finance guys like you, because you keep my head in the game when it comes to the numbers. I've got to pay attention to that. So those are those are the three tips that I would give people when they're first starting on, based on that's what great, I yeah, that's, that's really stuff. great. That's really great feedback. Thanks for the pitch on finance. <laughs> us, us, us finance guys and economists tend to be the ones that are a little bit more boring and sober. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, we need you. We need you. <laughs> um, I, I will say uh, you mentioned testing something out. Oh, um, we got a co uh, comment here from, I think it's Alan. And you can correct me if, if I, I pronounce your name right. It's uh, Alan. And he said, that's awesome to hear about the, awesome, the veteran community. I'm getting out in two years. So that's very motivating to think about. So it's comment to you, mm -hmm. CJ. Um, yep. It, it's, yep. you know, testing something, a viable business idea. Um, what, what is a way that you can do that? Um, you know, one, something that comes to mind for me is if you're thinking about doing something that you want to see if it's viable, um, go and look at what it is that you want to do and look at who else is trying to do what you're doing and look at what they're doing. Yeah. You know, that's one option, but I, there's got to be other ways too, right? And yep. are there any that come to mind for you as ways to test to yeah. see if something's... Yep, awesome question. And again, a couple of different solutions. I think yours is the first one that I always go to, right? I right. actually go out into the marketplace. I see what, what's being offered. Maybe I buy it. Maybe I use it. Maybe I'm already using it. Uh, you know, that that's a lot of, a lot of my ideas come from products and services that I'm already using but may not be fulfilling my needs the way I want them fulfilled. And so I can come up with a better way, you know, better mousetrap kind of thing. Next thing I do is, uh, you know, there's primary research and there's secondary research. Secondary research is when I'm on Google and I'm, I'm learning about my industry. So I want to learn about the industry. I want to read the articles. I want to read the boring paper that nobody else wants to read on, you know, statistics or whatever. And I want to make sure I get that information and take out the key points. Second thing I want to do is I want to join a lot of groups uh, that relate to that subject area or that topic. We can do this on any of our social platforms. Uh, I also love Google because it's got that keyword search where I can, I can set it up. You know, I've got, I've got Google set up so that any article on entrepreneurship in the world is is automatically I get a re, uh, the top ten of those are emailed to me every single day, uh, right. and I can and I can take a look at them. So I can constantly stay current on whatever subject I'm looking at, right? And and learn through secondary research. The primary research is when I actually start to go out and talk to people live, and that's when I actually bring you know I might give my product away for free. You know, famous Amos. You know, the chocolate chip cookie king, he literally went door to door with free cookies and said, what do you think? And then based on the feedback, he made adjustments and came up with the awesome cookie that he was able to create. So so right. that circle, that that circle of people going out into the marketplace and saying, what do you think? That's huge. Um, and then and then I start to do a test. Then after I get that type of feedback then I always want to do some sort of a beta test. And, and for me, the beta test with Open for Business Ventures and for Startup Lab uh, was my church. I went and, and put on a, a seminar at church and, and uh, spoke for free. And, and you know this, Patrick, I've been watching you. You've been using this approach to build and scale your business, and it's been working wonderfully. You know, starting small with the seminars or the public speaking appearances, and then, and then bringing in people and bringing in customers through that. But what may be even more valuable than the customers was the feedback that I got on what worked and what didn't work. You know, when we first started this company, it was designed for homeschoolers. And, and it was originally designed as a company to teach homeschool child, homeschooled children how to start their own business. And the feedback we got from the homeschool community was, you know, there was a lot of veterans in the homeschool community that said, hey, we need something for the adults. What can you do? And that we created a veterans program. Uh, we had a lot of uh, folks from church saying, hey, we need something too. And we, we created a church-based, faith-based program. 
So, you know, those circles and that getting out into the market, that's what helped us. That's what did it. Yeah. You, you know, a couple of things you mentioned brought to mind. You, you, people going out in the marketplace with their product and saying, hey, what do you think? That takes guts. You know, that's like, <laughs> that's hard to do because like you're, you, 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 you stand the, 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 the chance of rejection. People say, hey, I don't like your product, you know, and, and it, it, it's, it's difficult to do. And so if, if someone can do that, that yes. is just tremendous competitive edge for them. Because yeah. there are a lot of people that make products and they make them because they want to make them. They're like, people need this. And it's like, well, yeah. nobody cares about that. That's <laughs> right. To say it, you know, That's right. and, uh, and you're right. You have to find out what does the market want. Yeah. And it, it takes time. That's a really good point yeah. you bring up. Well, a quick story, and you might remember this. Our first book for the veterans program, I sat down and remember, I have not served. I, I you know, I have uncles and friends and, and close family members that have served, but I did not. And, sure. and but I thought I knew everything about this. I, I, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm going to design the cover for our book for veterans. And I had the I had the scope of a rifle focused in on success. Right. And then I had this camouflage thing behind it. I thought it was brilliant. And uh, Jill was very kind to me. She said, you know what, CJ, we might want to put this out. You know, the one person on the team that had the experience with the veterans community, I was like, no, 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 Jill, I got this. Well, <laughs> she, put, she put it out on, on, on Facebook. And within hours, we got some feedback. And they trashed it, Patrick. It was I'm not, sorry, it was yeah. not well received. Right, and, right. And so like you said, it does take a little bit of courage, right? But thank goodness. Thank goodness we did do that because the feedback we got was awesome. Right. And, 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 you know, so, something simple like, hey, CJ, not everybody in the military carried a gun, right? Uh, duh, right? Like, uh, right. So, so, so there was some simple feedback uh, mechanisms like that that helped us. And then we were able to take that feedback and create the, the new cover that you saw that you used which was super well received. Everybody loved the second version that Jill did based on the feedback. Uh, right. And we, we threw out the one that I did. So I think, you, I think you make a critical point. Don't get attached to the idea. Get attached to serving your community in, in the proper way, in the best way. And, and here was an idea that I had that had no value, but we were still able to serve our community in a positive way because we listen. Yes. And, and uh, not just, not just that I'll, one thing I'll add to what you said, CJ is experimenting and finding out what it is that people need, educating them. Uh, I think a lot of, a lot of people who are starting out think that, the, you know, it's so, so complicated. I have to make all these products. I have to find out what people want. It's like, actually there are products that are already made. There, you know, there are there's stuff out there that's already made for maybe the niche that you want to help. You know, so if you are again, I'm just using random examples here. But let's say you, you're you coming out of the military and you want to teach a course on leadership um, and maybe it's leadership when it comes to logistics. Right. Helping with supply chain management. Um, you know, there are there are products that are there courses, there are books, they're already created. And you can, if you find quality products and you bring them to your market, you can make sales and you didn't have to build any of them. You know, and that term is affiliate marketing, as you and I both know, but maybe some of our viewers don't know. Um, but just connecting the product to the, the person that needs it, really, you're not, you're, again, we're not pushing products on people. We're just trying to make that connection. You can grow a business that way and you can help the people and you don't even have to build the products and you already know that they're selling. Um, you know, so I think that's something for those that, you know, are watching and thinking about this. Uh, those are just ideas uh, that you can that you can use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't have to build it all from the ground up. Great. Point. Right. Okay. Great point. Right. What well, uh, do you CJ, have you found with with open for business ventures? Uh, do you guys primarily just construct your own products do your own launches or have you found a pro other products that you've been able to use to help and done any kind of affiliate marketing or not? Yep. We, we, you know, we've done a blend of both um, it, in the beginning. Uh, you know, again, thank goodness for Jill, right? Because she, right. Had, tech, she had the tech acumen to, to be able to put things together that I didn't even know existed. 
But probably more importantly, she had the ability to kick the tires on these other products that we could use and know which ones were going to be beneficial and which ones were legit and which ones were just not the level of quality that we were looking for, right? I think that's an important point. Not all of these other products or services are created the same. And you right. really have to align with one that shares the same values and the same commitment to quality and the same commitment to service that you have. Um, we made a lot of errors partnering with wrong with the wrong tools, with the wrong people, with the wrong organizations, and they didn't reflect our commitment to excellence. And, right. and, and so we, we had to make changes along the way. But yes, we, we, I love those types of tools and, and we use many of them. Even, even on a lot of our tech platforms, we've, we've partnered with other agencies who've done a build out and then we've just customized based on what we like to do. Uh, a lot of our video partners come in. They already have, uh, you know, products that we're using, and we customize to what works for us. So we love that. So here's here's a, a free tip for entrepreneurs, Patrick. A lot of times, if you have a small team, what happens is you become closed off in in your knowledge, in in bringing new knowledge into the team. So a great way to bring new knowledge into the team and learn new skills is by partnering with these other agencies or these other tools that have a certain knowledge that you don't have. And now you can, can, can continue to grow intellectually as an entrepreneur and not just uh, economically as an entrepreneur. But you know, what, can you give an example of a way you did that? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of times with marketing, you know, marketing is not as, you know, I understand basic marketing. So, you know, I've, I've, I've got the old, you know, I could dust off the old MBA if I had to and break that out. But, sure. but I'm not, I'm not an expert on current marketing strategies. Jill is, is, is her expertise is the tech side and the design side, not the marketing. So what we've been able to do is partner with, with, with the best marketers that we could afford, right? That's always a factor. So we partner with the best marketers we can afford. They might come on and work with the team for a specific project for a cer certain time. And we get to learn what they know. And we get, to we get to take some of those skills and incorporate them into our DNA and carry them forward even once that project ends. So right. I think marketing has been one area where that's been huge for us uh, and been a huge benefit. Now you mentioned, so you would partner like say with another organization, you might pay them a fee for their services, but then Correct. over the course of that project, you're learning and you're now incorporating this knowledge that they're bringing, you're incorporating that into your business DNA are there any are there any ideas that you have as far as marketing um, that may that that startups might do where they don't have a budget to 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 spend on marketing? Like, can they team up with someone? How how would they find someone to team up with that maybe yeah. is a little bit better than they are? I think social media is our best friend in this area, okay. right? I really do. And then I think look for agencies that that have an interest in your service, but they can't provide your service. So, for instance, Christ Church, my church, when we first started, they are not they were not uh, experts on entrepreneurship, but they were experts in marketing to the to the membership. The, right. They knew they knew how to get the word out. Right. And 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 so what we the part part of that partnership was I would provide the, the entrepreneurship services. They would handle the marketing. And, and then we did a split on on the revenue. Certain percentage went to the church, certain percentage went to us. And, yes. and they, so they were responsible for handling marketing and providing a location. We were responsible for the teaching and the education side. We both stayed in our lane and it was a brilliant partnership that, you know, that that's, we, we ran several workshops there and they were all very successful. So yeah. I think that that's a great way to do that, Patrick. And thanks for bringing that up because we had no sure. budget at the time. We had no budget yeah. to market. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, that's a great example of how they provided the marketing for you. You know, um, yeah. let's see, Michelle, uh, good to see you. Uh, she's got a comment here. She says she's been looking. I, she said, I've been looking to purchase a business. Yeah. Uh, and I guess, you know, I, I, I've thought about that, too. I think sometimes purchasing a business 
can help you grow whatever side hustle you have. Yeah. But um, it, it seems like it might be smart to first partner with a business that's like what you want to purchase to learn a little bit about it first, yeah. uh, unless you already know a lot about it. Um, yeah. That's just a thought I had um, just coming off of Michelle's comment yeah. there. Uh, Bring up a great point about learning about the industry, learning about the business. I've worked with entrepreneurs. One of the best strategies I've ever seen um, was uh, folks getting jobs at the company that they wanted to purchase. Right. <laughs> uh, right. You know, or, or getting a job at a similar company if they couldn't actually work at that company. But you, some of you may have heard of, of, the sub, of the sandwich shop Jersey Mike's, right? It's very popular up here in the Northeast. And that, that company was bought by a 16-year-old kid, Peter Cancro, who was sweeping the floors at, the, at one of their locations. Wow. So, so that's a brilliant option of buying the company uh, you know, or buying an existing business. The other area of caution there is the research, right? You, I, I would definitely bring in the accountants and the financial advisors to go over those books and make sure that the numbers are, are where they should be and where they're telling you that they're at. And then also check into the brand itself, make sure that the brand is solid. And, and uh, one of the mistakes I made through a partnership with a company was, I didn't realize there were some outstanding legal uh, cases against a company that I was partnering with. And once I partnered with them, then I became responsible for those yeah. legal cases as well. So. Uh, that's another, you know, just an area to look at if you are going to buy a, a business. Due diligence is so important before you is, jump into that. CJ, is there is there a one-stop shop location that you can go for guidance yeah. if you're looking to buy a business? Like, let's say, hey, you know, we're still kind of recovering from, you know, the pandemic. The economy isn't fully reopened yet. I mean, we're slowly reopening everything. But there's still a lot of businesses that maybe people can buy right now at a discount compared to what they would get during normal times. And so if they're interested in buying a business, is there some place, you know, where they're not, you know, grasping after all these different, yeah. you know, variables or like, ah, oh, you know, oh, yeah, I got to find out about legal stuff. And oh, yeah. Is there a place where they can get guidance? Maybe you can provide it. I, um, yeah. I, you know, it's so it's, it's so funny. Yes, Patrick, I have an awareness that such an organization exists, but I can't. Access okay. to Fair enough. Now, but yeah. I'll look into it and get it to you so that you can provide it to your audience uh, in the future, right? However okay. you distribute knowledge. But there are those types of services out there. And again, Google's our best friend in this area, right? You know, uh, and and uh, LinkedIn. There's a couple of networks that I belong to on LinkedIn based around, you know, uh, different programs I've taken, education programs I've taken uh, where folks start – they, they have a subgroup within the bigger group of uh, business owners or bid, business purchasers, things like that. Um, so those types of agencies exist. Definitely look for them. They're out there. Okay. Uh, what other, you know, we're kind of coming up on the end of our time here, but I, I just wanted to ask you, CJ, what other, what other, you know, tips, tricks, come to mind or, or yeah. words of wisdom that you can leave with us. Yeah. Uh, we, we know your time is valuable. So we want to maximize it as much as we can. I love it. I love, it. I love being with y'all. And I think for me, I, the, the greatest gift for me has been that, you know, again, going back to my parents' age when they grew up, a lot of this is about economic sustainability for me and my family and, and the people that I teach, right? The people I want them to be successful. And I think I grew up in an era where, your primary financial asset was your home. And it was, you know, just buy a home, home, home ownership, right? And it was sort of a guarantee that that asset was going to increase over time. And that would be part of your nest egg when you retired. And again, I think the, the, the financial landscape, Patrick, you know this far better than I do, has changed, right? And that's yeah, not, not different. <laughs> it's not a sure thing the way it used to be, right? I know. And, and so what I encourage folks is that, Again, you talked about this earlier, betting on yourself, right? Warren Buffett. And, and, and so part of my financial strategy towards that, I hope I never retire, but towards those, those funner years, right, that I think are still down the road, but they seem to be getting here sooner than <laughs> I expected. 
Uh, I think the the idea of my business that 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 it's providing an income to support my family now, but it's also becoming an asset for future times that I could leverage in multiple ways, any ways, any way that I choose. Right. Um, the other thing I like about a small business is, you know, well, I've had some jobs in my life. I love them. I also I love the salary that I got from those jobs. It was it was incredible, you know, to be able to predict those numbers the way I did. Um, but but when I die, then that job dies with me. Right. And, and so but with my business, when I die, my business will go on. Right. And 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 it and I've created assets, financial assets that have value that yes. you know will be passed on to my children. Jill and I have written nine books. We don't own any of the books. All the books are owned by our children. So yeah. so so that that those are the type of assets that we're creating to help with long term wealth with our families. So that, that this would be something sustainable. So the, the tip I have is view the business as fun, view it as something that's adding value to your, your community, um, view it as an expression of yourself, but also don't forget that it's a financial asset that I need to include in, in my portfolio when I'm talking to advisors, you know, when I'm talking to you about how my future is going to look financially. Right. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, CJ, again, thanks so much for being here with us. No, this I love been, it, Patrick. Thank yeah, you. It's yeah, been a real, you. real treat, a real treat to have you here. Um, and we'll be sure, just as a reminder for those maybe who are, you know, watching here at, uh, towards the end of our interview, uh, CJ is founder and owner of Open for Business Ventures. I'm going to post the link below uh, this video if you need to get in touch with him. Uh, you can use that link or uh, I've sent him a message on Facebook, CJ Meenan, and um, and that's the best way to get in touch with him. He can help you. He can give you some guidance if you're interested in starting a side hustle or you want to start a business and scale it into something, you know, serious, you know, real vocation for your future. Um, either if you're, you know, if you're in the military or if you're getting out uh, or if you're not military, you don't have to be military. I know there are a lot of military and veterans in our audience, but, you know, you don't have to be military to do this. Um, there are just there are a lot of really great resources that CJ has that he's he shared with us today and that he'll share with you in the future uh, if you contact him. So, CJ, thanks again. It's a pleasure having you. Hopefully you'll be willing to come back. Uh, we'd love to have you back in the future. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Thank you. And, All right. Uh, Thank thanks you to everyone. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for joining us. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon.